Today I'll be demonstrating the ease of use of Near Me for Group Calls. Once logged into the Attend Anywhere platform, group waiting areas are clearly marked and you'll see an indication of waiting callers. Before launching your call, there are a couple of choices you can make. Whether you want a chat available during the session and, if specially enabled, you can choose whether or not your callers will see the other callers' full names or just initials. The default is initials and I don't have the option to change that in this waiting area. Any changes have to be made prior to starting the call. Pre-call features such as sending out a meeting link by text or email are available to you, just as they are in a standard waiting area. Once I'm ready to start the meeting, I click the launch call button. It's worth noting, until you see callers in your call queue, you won't be able to start the meeting. Now I'm in, and before I let callers in from the lobby, I could create breakout rooms to use later. I'm not going to here. The lobby, showing my waiting callers, is now visible to the right. I could admit individuals, drop individuals, or let everyone in. Should callers arrive after that, you'll also see them appear in the lobby. There's a secondary alert above, in case you've hidden the participant pane. Again, you can admit them, ignore them, or drop their call if they're not welcome. The call controls auto-hide. If you require them but can't see them, just wiggle your mouse or tap your trackpad. Call controls will be familiar to users of standard near me waiting areas and most other video calling software. Your caller's controls are almost the same as yours, except they're not able to share their desktops, so don't have that button. You can mute or unmute your camera and microphone. Those buttons also allow you to choose inputs if you have more than one microphone or camera. Your caller's microphones will be automatically muted when you let them into your group call. You have the ability to share your screen with your callers. For confidentiality, you should not share your entire screen. We'd suggest sharing other browser tabs is the best option, and you'll be able to share that tab's audio too. See our website for a specific guide on PowerPoint sharing. The next button opens the chat panel. I'll come back to that in more detail. That's followed by the raise hand. More likely your callers will use that than you, but it may be useful if there are two or more service providers in the call. When one of your callers uses this button, you'll see a brief on-screen message as well as the raised hand. The layout button is after that. This alters the layout for you only, not your callers. To make a specific caller fill your main window, just click on their video tile. Use the layout button to return to the default view. Both callers and providers have the ability to drop the bandwidth used for their call. That's very useful. If you notice a poor quality image or drop video coming from a particular caller, having them lower their bandwidth by moving from the highest quality towards best performance may help stabilise it. Moving all the way down to best performance results in an audio-only call for that participant. There are some extra settings grouped together at the end of the control bar. The most interesting and sometimes problematic is the background settings choice. Using this allows a caller or provider to blur their background or change it for something else. Processing for these background effects is done on the local PC, so it should only be used if you're certain your PC has the necessary spare processing power. If not, audio sync problems and poor visuals are common. Please use with caution. Time to return to chat. If enabled for your waiting area, text chat can be sent to the whole group or individuals. Callers can initiate chat to the whole group but at present can't initiate private chat with their providers. The chat is wiped at the end of your session. Sending to the group is achieved by just typing in the chat pane. To start sending an individual chat, you'd use the individual caller controls accessed on their video tile. They can respond to you privately by using the arrow they'd see in the message you've just sent them.
you'd like to use breakout rooms with your group session, there are a couple of things to take into consideration. If you don't want to leave callers without a provider, you're going to require more than one provider in your call and have them enter the breakout room before you move callers there from the main group. Also, if a caller drops out of the call while in a breakout room, then dials back into the group call, they'll appear in the lobby but can only be admitted to the main group. There is no direct entry back into a breakout room. Moving callers or providers into breakout rooms, then back to the main group, is a simple task that's achieved in the breakout pane. Click the breakout button to open the pane. You can create as many breakout rooms as you wish. I only require one for this example. To send a caller to a particular breakout room, click the three dots to the right of their name, then click on the relevant breakout room. At this stage, I see the one remaining caller I have not sent to the breakout room. The breakout pane shows the two callers in that breakout room. To join a breakout room yourself, hover over the one you want to enter and click the join button when it appears. You have full control of the breakout rooms regardless of where you are. I'm going to send one caller back to the main meeting. I'm left seeing the one remaining caller in the breakout room with me. To move yourself back to the main meeting, you can click the leave button. In addition to moving single callers back from a breakout room, you can close the breakout room and automatically send all its participants back to the main meeting. We've covered sending private messages using the controls on an individual caller's tile, but there are other controls there too. If your caller's microphone is live, you can mute it here. For your caller's privacy, you can't unmute them yourself, but you can send them an on-screen message asking them to do so. Other controls give you the ability to mute all callers apart from the one whose tile you're on. You're also able to stop that caller's camera feed or disable everyone else's. Pin to stage makes that caller fill your call screen in the same way as clicking on their video tile. The final control is an individual volume control for that caller. It only affects the volume you'd receive from that caller, not the volume your other callers hear. One other very useful feature, especially for those with a single screen or smaller twin screens, is the ability to hide the participant pane to gain more screen space. I use it all the time. Don't worry, you'll still see an on-screen alert should new callers arrive. The only things left to show are the options for ending a call. If there are two or more providers in a call and you want to leave but let the call continue, you can use the leave button. If you're the sole provider, using the leave button will allow the group call to run for two minutes after you leave it, but it will then automatically end after the two minutes, unless you return to the call within that time. To end the call for everybody, use the end call for all button 